Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. I know I said that once I start using my library more, I won't have to buy so many books. Well, it's still true, it is still true, despite what the title of this video tells you. Not gonna lie, it is a little bit clickbaity because I actually didn't buy a whole lot. I've got sent quite a bit, and these are books that are actually from the last two and a half months, three months, since my last regular book haul video which I think was in May and that was for my birthday. So yeah these books are spread out from mid May to the end of July. I'm not including any of the books that I talked about in my quit my job book haul because that was just a one day deal when I went into my bookstore and used my staff discount card for the very last time and I'm not going to talk about the books that I haul during Yalk which I talked about in my Yalk and Comic Con vlog. So if you want to check out what I hold in those videos links are down in the description box. These are all books that I hold in the past two and a half months that I haven't talked about yet. Well actually I have read some of them and I have talked about them in the vlog but I haven't talked about hauling them yet. So we're just getting caught up, we are getting up to speed on the books that I've been sent, books that I bought so that we can start fresh, we can start anew. Because I am keeping my promise I will be using my library a lot more in the future so I will not have to buy books as much as I used to. So this is probably going to be my last book haul until maybe the end of the year. So buckle up bitches, we are going to be hauling some books. I will start with the manga because I've already talked talked about these in a vlog. I've already read pretty much all of them. So there are six manga books that I've already read and they are Ten Dance, There Are Things I Can't Tell You, Scattering His Virgin Bloom, Therapy Game Volume 2, Crimson Spell and Change World. Now I haven't yet read Therapy Game Volume 2 but I will when I've got some time to read extra books. When have I got the time to read extra books? But yes, I already read five out of six of these in a Yaoi vlog, so I will link that down in the description box too. If you want to know what these are about or what I thought of them, they are gay and explicit. Well, most of them are. These two aren't really explicit, but these, well, the three that I've read are, and then Therapy Begin Volume 2 most likely is. So we're going from that to Animal Crossing. I have... Animal Crossing Deserted Island Diary Volume 2. I do have Volume 1. They're so short and so cute. I haven't even read Volume 1 yet, but it is just Animal Crossing New Horizons. It follows villagers on an island. <laughs> and you follow four of the goofy residents that are part of that world. So I really want to get this because, you know, cute Animal Crossing vibes. I love watching people play it. I don't really like playing it myself. I do have my favourites who play Animal Crossing, okay? His name may or may not be Patrick. And then I hold Little Witch Academia Volume 1, and this was mentioned to me as a recommendation for more mangas to read, and it looks so cute. I absolutely adore the cover of it. We follow Akko, who has always wanted to become a real witch, and she ends up getting accepted to a school where her childhood hero actually goes to, or went to. She is also the first person in that school who has come from a non-magical family, so it'll be really interesting to see the art style in this. I don't want to put my coffee down. The the art style in this is quite endearing and rather cute. I'm willing to give this one a try. The last sort of graphic novel one that I got, which was sent to me and I didn't come with a gift note, so if you're watching this, please let me know if you gifted me this. But that is The Walking Dead Compendium 3. And honestly, this is not cheap, so please let me know who sent me this. Please let me know. Thank you so much whoever did send me this. But I do have the first two volumes. I'm gonna be reading all of the compendiums in October for the series finale of The Walking Dead, the TV show. I am a huge fan of the TV show, but I have yet to read the comic. So it'll be really good to read them all in a row. So it is set in a, a post-apocalyptic world where zombies have come about. <laughs> we do follow Rick Grimes and his family as they try to survive in this zombie infested world. Honestly, I was obsessed with the TV show. I think from 2010 to 2015 was my peak Walking Dead era. So it'd be nice to go back into the world. Another book I was sent and it didn't come with a gift note was Ring by Koji Suzuki. If you sent me this, please let me know in the comments below. I really want to thank you for sending this. I'm so excited to read this because I do have a video idea for it at the end of October and it fits in so well. I've been wanting to read this for a while because the movie The Ring scarred me. And that was just the English version. I can only imagine what the original source material is like. And I've heard that the book is far more terrifying than the film. I think it was with Naomi Watts. I think. I really do like that film. But essentially it is about this cursed videotape that when people watch it, they die in seven days. At least I think that's what the book is. They didn't change it completely, did they? Yeah, four victims had shared a log cabin for one night exactly seven days before their deaths. A curious videotape which plays not a movie but a strange collection of abstract subliminal images concluding with a portentous message. Those who have viewed these images are fated to die at this exact hour one week from now. If you do not wish to die, you must follow these instructions exactly then the tape cuts to static. Ooh, okay. What didn't happen in the film 
was that if you do not wish to die, you must follow these instructions. Exactly. That's so interesting. Okay, I'm really excited to read this. So thank you whoever sent me this. Do let me know in the comments below if you sent me it. Thank you. I got a lot of stuff from publishers. One of the ones I want to show you, and I can't show you the front because it has my address on. This little package here that I got from Usborne. And there's even a candle in here, which is so cool. That's like proper horror movie candle is what that is. There's Liar's Tongue, which I'm assuming is some kind of sweet. We have Malice Water. Ooh, for boosted magic. Interesting. And we also have the actual book which it is promoting, which is The Girl, The Ghost and The Lost Name by Reese Carter. Very excited to read this one. It sounds perfect for Halloween and it comes out the 29th of September. So perfect time to read it. It just says, welcome to Elston Fright, a forgotten town where witches lurk, sea monsters roam and a girl is on the hunt for answers. The main character, she's called Corpse. And she has a body made of wax, seaweed for hair, and polished abalone shelves for eyes. Corpse is bound to haunt the witch's sea shack forever. She has no memory of who she was before she arrived on the rock that doesn't exist. That is until a ghost visits her with a message. A treasure exists that can reunite Corpse with her family and her name. So that's pretty awesome. So excited to read it. Again, October would be perfect. Perfect vibes for it. Thank you to Usborne for the package. It's incredible. A huge thank you to Farshall for sending me Dead Good Detectives by Jenny McLachlan. This is from the author of The Land of Raw and that was a book that I really enjoyed a few years back. This one follows Sid who unleashes the ghost of a 300 year old pirate and this pirate unlocks the door to the halfway inn the Halfway House, which is a magical inn full of lost souls. This is another good one that you could read during October time. Gosh, now I'm thinking like, I could do a whole vlog reading all of these ghostly middle grade books. But damn, October's already booked. But another good one to look out for, it says this comes out 7th of July, 2022. Wait, is this already out? Oh damn, I'm late on this one, <laughs> fuck. What about this one? Oh my God. Right, Firecats of London by Anna Farga. And apparently this one came out 7th of July as well. It's now the 1st of August. Why do publishers send me things? I'm shit. But this is from the author of The Umbrella Mouse, and I really like The Umbrella Mouse. This one is set during the Great Fire of London, and we follow two alley cats? Are they wild cats? Are starring Ash? Oh my god, one of the cats is called Ash. I have a cat called Ash. Oh my god, that's awesome. I need to read this now. And they're determined to return home. This is gonna be like another really good one. It has animal protagonists, so if you enjoy that, I feel like Anna Fargo's books are for you because I really did enjoy The Umbrella Mouse. I thought it was so good. So this one, I'm sure, is gonna be even better. A huge thank you to Nights Off for sending me Key Player by Kelly Yang. This one is the fourth book in the Front Desk series, and I didn't even realize it was gonna be a fourth book. I love Front Desk, and I love Three Keys. I still need to read the third book, which I do own, and now I have the fourth book, but it does follow Mia and her family who have moved from China to America and they now run a motel together. It seems like, oh, the Women's World Cup is coming to California. And after England's women's national team winning the cup yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before? This is coming at a perfect time and everyone has football fever, especially Mia. So like, this is perfect, this is perfect. Honestly, huge congrats to the Lionesses for winning. Okay, anyway, yes, thank you so much Nights Off for sending me this. Okay, when I got sent this, I read it from start to finish the next day, and that is Which Way To Anywhere by Cressida Cowell. This comes out in September, and it was sent to me from Hodder. I thought it was so good. This is from the same author as How to Train Your Dragon and The Wizards of Wands. This is Fairy Wizards of Wands, so if you would be missing The Wizards of Wands like I have, this is perfect. So we do follow some siblings. They have this whole magical world opened up to them and they end up going on an adventure and yeah that is like the very basic version of it but some things happen that I don't want to spoil and I'm just excited for what happens next. Well, this was such a good book so imaginative so whimsical and honestly thank you so much for sending me this I could not wait so I did I read it all in one day. I got sent The Accidental Stowaway by Judith Eagle from Faber and Faber. This one is historical it's set in Liverpool in 1910. This one follows Patch who runs onto a ship in order to get away from a constable but then the ship starts setting sail and they've become an accidental stowaway. It's quite short so this could end up being a very quick and easy historical middle grade to read. I haven't read anything by Judith Eagle yet but this sounds pretty good and thank you so much to the publisher for sending it. I'm so excited about this, The Light Thieves by Helena Duggan because Helena Duggan wrote the Place Called Perfect series and this is their brand new book. Oh, it's not out yet, is it? September. It comes out in September so it hasn't been released yet for you. This one is about the Earth shifting on its axis and this dark mark appears on the sun and then a billionaire, who I think is the main character, I think he's like a young boy but he's a billionaire, tries to figure out a way to save the world essentially. I know nothing beyond that, quite honestly. I don't even know what the actual genre of this book is, is it sci-fi, is it mystery, is it middle grade horror? Like, I don't know, but I'm so glad that Usborne sent it because it's Helena Duggan and I loved A Place Called Perfect, so I'm sure this will be just as amazing. This is such a cool book because it is in like a sort of slipcover thing. 
and it is The Little Match Girl Strikes Back by Emma Carroll and illustrated by Lauren Child. And it is a, a bit of a younger middle grade filled with all of these amazing illustrations, but it is, I think, a sort of reimagining or a kind of sequel to The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. So I think The Little Match Girl is, I would never read it. I think I've seen a very short animated film of it where a young girl in Victorian England she is a little match girl. I think she's selling matches or something. I believe she dies in the cold. But I think this is if she didn't die. This is if she lived on. So yeah, it sounds really good. And it's Emma Carroll. We love ourselves some Emma Carroll. We stan Emma Carroll on my channel. A huge thank you to Nosy Crow for sending me The Consequence Girl by Alistair Chisholm. Alistair Chisholm wrote Orion Lost, which is one of my favourite middle grades, and Adam 2, which is another fantastic sci-fi. In this one, we follow Cora, and the entire world is in ruins, and nobody knows why. Cora has this ability that is going to allow the world to, you know, repair itself, I think. But there are evil, villainous people who are after her. So if this is anything like Alistair Chisholm's previous two books, I'm gonna love it. And this is out, this is the final copy of it. So I'm behind on my middle grades, but you know, I'm just, look, I've got projects, okay? I've got projects. And it has made me so behind on so many of my favorite middle grade authors' books. Honestly, I'm behind on everything. So I got sent two books by Kieran Larwood from the publisher Faber and Faber. And one of them is The Tree Keepers and the other one is Carnival of the Hunted. This one is a sequel to Carnival of the Lost, I believe it is. And I think it's just about a group of characters who work at a carnival. <laughs> and then The Tree Keepers, this one looks so cool. This is the proof copy. It's essentially just like a map is the kind of cover in the back cover and spine. It's just one continuous map, which is awesome. I love that. Comes out the 1st of September. We follow a girl who lives in this place, this kind of little village that surrounds this incredible tree that gives everybody who lives there extraordinary powers. This tree comes under threat one day and it's up to the main character to save the tree and save her community, her village. So both of these sound fantastic, especially this one, the tree keepers. It sounds so good, but thank you so much for sending me these. I'm looking forward to reading them at some point. <laughs> I also got sent Never Forget You by Jamila Gavin from Far Show. I think this might actually be teen. So I think this is about like four teenage girls and their story during World War II as their friendship gets tested, as they each do different things like flying planes or going undercover in France and England. So it sounds like a really good book. I'm loving me some World War II fiction at the minute. So thank you so much Far Show for sending it. Harder also sent me Sade and Her Shadow Beasts by Rachel Faturi. So this one follows Sade and she has this incredible imagination it's very colourful and then when her mum dies I believe the colour drains from her imagination and she starts to see these beasts. I think this is going to be quite a heavy hitting book. I don't know if it's middle grade or teen but I think it will explore grief. Looking forward to reading it though. Beautiful sprayed edges. Thank you Hodder for sending it. A huge thank you to Wellbeck Flame for sending me The Asparagus Bunch by Jessica Scott White. This one came in a box filled with sweets. Like it was filled with with sweets and I believe it's because the main character or one of the characters in this is obsessed with sweets. So honestly, thank you so much for that package. I flew through those sweets though. I flew through them. They were so nice. Candy to my American friends. It says on the back here, I'm Leon John Crothers. I'm 4,779 days old, 13 years in one month if you're mathematically challenged. I've been moved on from six different schools. Most people think I've got an attitude problem. Maybe they have a point, which is maybe the point of this story. A fresh and irreverent comedy starring a cast of neurodiverse characters and sweets. Lots and lots of sweets. So that's why the sweets comes into it. So it sounds really interesting. It sounds like a book you could get a lot out of. So thank you again so much, Wellbeck Flame, for sending it. Okay, a huge Huge thank you to Amanda and Mike for sending me some books. Firstly, I have The Legend of Greg by Chris Rylander. This is the first in a series, but I absolutely fell in love with the cover and the kind of summary of the series as a whole. This one follows dwarves and elves, and I believe Greg, our main character, is a dwarf, and he thinks he's ordinary, but he's actually not. He's extraordinary. So this delves into dwarf lore and all of the great fantastical things about fantasy stories. It sounds high stakes, it sounds action packed, it sounds adventurous and I'm here for it. So thank you so much Amanda and Mike for sending that. But also thank you for sending me to Goosebumps Hall of Horrors books where you have Night of the Giant Everything and Why I Quit Zombie School. So these are two more Goosebumps books to add to the collection. The Goosebumps Horrorland and Hall of Horror series is the next one that I will be tackling for my big 
Goosebumps series read. So I definitely needed these for that video. So thank you so much for sending it. I only have a few more left in the Horrorland and Hall of Horror series to collect. Then I've got them all and I'm ready for that video, which will actually be next month. Oh my God, because it's August. I'm reading them all in September. So next month I should have a reading vlog for all of Goosebumps Horrorland and Hall of Horrors. Excited to get it done. And then a huge thank you to Anne for sending me all of these high school musical books and this high school musical magazine. Honestly, I love this so much. So we have high school musical stories from East High. I have Battle of the Bands here, Wildcat Spirit. This one is Heart to Heart. We have Get Your Vote On, Ringing It In. And then we have novelizations of High School Musical 2 and High School Musical 3. Just let me live my High School Musical dreams, okay? This is awesome, honestly. I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Anne, for sending them. I believe Anne was just getting rid of these, so she asked if I wanted them. And I said, yes, of course, let me save those High School Musical books. So maybe I might read them for a vlog one day. Maybe I might put myself in the film one day. Who knows? We're all in this to get... Oh, hang on, I've got like sweaty armpits. I don't know if I should have done that. My Friend, The Octopus by Lindsay Galvin. This has French flaps. I love me some French flaps. And this is from the same author as Darwin's Dragons, which I really enjoyed. This one is set in England in 1893. And this one follows Vinny, who starts to sketch the sea creatures in the local aquarium. And then she ends up befriending the octopus there. She has this kind of special bond with the octopus there. So I think it's going to be really good. I think it's going to teach us a lot about conservation and how we treat animals and things. So I love middle grades that tackle that kind of theme. And again, I enjoy Darwin's Dragon, so I think this one's going to be awesome. And then The Midnighters, which is from the same author as The Unadoptables. This is under the dust jacket. It's so colourful and so beautiful. And end papers as well. Puffin books make the best children's hardbacks I've ever seen. So this one follows Emma and she's from a family of scientists, except she can kind of predict the future, which goes against the scientific explanations of her family. She then goes to live with her eccentric uncle in Prague, where she ends up meeting a girl and this girl vanishes, disappears. So Emma has to try and find her. And I think it opens up this incredible world in Prague as well. So yeah, it sounds really good. Looking forward to reading it. And again, love the look of the cover, under the dust jacket, everything, it's beautiful. So those are all of the middle grades. Let's get to the YA and adult books as well, which aren't a lot. This is probably gonna be quite a short video, but I did get sent Babel by RF Kwong and this one was sent to me literally just before Yalk. I was on the train to Yalk when I got a message from a colleague at work saying that Babel has arrived and I didn't realise I would actually get it. I begged for it but I didn't realise I would get it and I was on my way to Yalk thinking I need to win Babel at Yalk. I need to win that shit. But then as soon as I was on the train there I got a message to say I had gotten one. So I was so excited and so happy that I got this. I still need to read it, which I do plan on doing ASAP. But yeah, this is Dark Academia set in Oxford. Oh, it's set in 1836, so it's a bit of a historical Dark Academia book. The Royal Institute of Translation, the tower from which all the power of the empire flows. Can a student stand against an empire? Ooh, good question. This has had so many fantastic reviews from my friends so far, and I don't think I will be disappointed by it because this is one of my anticipated books, one of my highly anticipated books of the year. So I don't think I'll be disappointed. Why haven't I read this yet, you ask? It's a question. It is a question. It's right here and I need to read it right now. Oh my god. A huge thank you to Amy for sending me Mina and the Slayers, which is a proof copy of the second book in the Mina and the Undead series. So I really enjoyed the first book, Mina and the Undead. I thought it was fantastic. And this one was actually signed by Amy as well. So thank you so much for taking the time out to send me a little care package and a copy of the sequel, which I'm very excited to read. And this one is set in New Orleans in 1995. And from the first book, I love the atmosphere in the first book so much. So I'm looking forward to seeing it carry over into this one. This one, apparently Mina is on work experience with a detective. And the detective is investigating a savage mass killer and a rise in suspicious animal attacks. And there are a group of slayers who are rising up against some rogue vampires. I also love the chapter headings and things. Like that's so cool. But yes, very excited to see sink my teeth into this one. I was kindly sent Lightlock by Alex Astor. It does sound good. It does sound good. Every hundred years, the island of Lightlock appears for only 100 days to host a deadly game where rulers of six realms fight to break their curses and win unparalleled power. Well, this is a limited edition collector's arc, apparently. That's cool. Do not really know anything else about it, but thank you so much, Amila Pooks, for sending me a copy. I appreciate it and look forward to reading it when I can. Now, I need to show you guys the gorgeousness of the Bridgerton Illumicrate set. These came the other day. Oh my gosh, so bloody gorgeous these books are. And this is all eight of the books by Julia Quinn. We have The Duke and I, 
And they all have sprayed edges as well that matches the color of the book. So yeah, this is the first book, The Duke and I. And I think it's just the first book that's signed. The first book is signed by Julia Quinn. And I can't really tell you too much of what Bridgerton is about because one, I've never read them. And two, I've never seen the show. So it'll be interesting to read them all. I do want to read them maybe in November or December and do a complete series vlog. The Duke and I. And then The Viscount Who Loved Me. This is the second one with the sprayed edge. But I love... Well, one, I love how the covers have a sort of design on, like a different design on each one. So this one's a B, and then they all have like a window and a kind of door sometimes on the spine to match. Oh, gorgeous. Uh, you go, just go, just go. An Offer from a Gentleman, which is the third book. Romance and Mr. Bridgerton, Love in the Green. The green is gorgeous in it. To Sir Philip with Love. Oh. I just can't get over how gorgeous these books are. When He Was Wicked, which is purple. We have It's In His Kiss, which is the penultimate book. And then we also have On The Way To The Wedding, which is the eighth, and I think final book in the Bridgerton series. I think there might be some side stories as well, or maybe some like prequels or like other books within that world. But these are the main Bridgerton set. Excited to read those. I haven't heard the best of things about some of these books. I have heard some problematic, troubling things about maybe the first one especially. So it'll be interesting to read them and see what I think about this entire series. So stick around to find out what I think. Right, so the last few books, I have two that were sent to me from Fairyloot. We have The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah, and we also have This Fish's Grace by Emily Theed. And I do unbox these both in Fairyloot unboxings if you want to see me do that, if you want to know more about these books. These are both YA. I think they're both fantasy as well, and just stunning editions from Fairyloot. So yeah, those look interesting. I'm excited to read. The last three books I bought, so we have Out of the Blue by Jason June, I just love the cover of this. I love that it's gay. I love that there's Merfolk in this. So we follow Merfolk, teen Merfolk, who must undergo a certain journey where they help a human within one moon cycle and return to Pacifica to become an elder or fail and remain stuck on land forever. So we follow Crest, who meets Sean, a human lifeguard whose boyfriend has recently dumped him. Crest agrees to help Sean make his ex jealous and win him back. I think they both spend some time together and fall in love. Oh my God, it sounds so good. I honestly am on a bit of a gay kick because I also picked up So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lukens. I haven't really heard anything about it, but I don't know this like fantasy and gay. So this one follows a prince who I think is destined to become king or the person who's supposed to take over the throne is dead. So Arik is the, the king to be. He has to find a soulmate in three months. And I think the soulmate ends up being the mage who is a boy. So that's interesting. So yeah, I picked up two gay YA books. And then the last book I picked up, which I'm honestly kind of sad about, is Hide by Kirsten White. I got like 50 pages into this, I think maybe, and day after, I just couldn't. I didn't like the writing style. I didn't like the character dialogue. Essentially, a few people end up going to this theme park to play a game, an amusement park, and things go wrong. But I didn't get that far into it to get to really anything good. I mean, it might get better after the start of it, who knows, but I just wasn't enjoying it. I was probably reading at the wrong time, so I put it down and I might just end up unhauling this. I know this is a book haul and I'm already saying about unhauling it, but I did give it a try. I did love the premise of it. I thought I would enjoy it, but it just wasn't for me. I just couldn't get over the character dialogue. The dialogue was awful. Wow. But at least I gave it a go. At least I gave it a go. So yeah, that is the last book. So that was my book haul and most likely the last book haul until the end of the year. There's not going to be another music video. I'm not going to break out a song right now. Now that I am actually self-employed now, I need to be more careful about what I do. <laughs> but I hope that doesn't deter you from liking this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. But leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books mentioned in this book haul. If I should prioritize any of them, I'd love to chat to you all about anything and everything. A huge thank you to my patrons for support my channel if you'd like to join my patreon or follow me on any social media all the links are down in the description box but i hopefully will see you in the next video bye